Hey everyone, Renee here. I got my 2020 favorites for you. So 2020 sucked. Let's get that out the way. I feel like I say this every year, but I don't remember a time when there was more interest in skincare, whether it's because we are treating, you know, mask related issues that didn't previously exist, or if it's you know, a therapeutic ritual that helps keep us de-stressed, or if it's simply because we're spending so much more time at home and maybe, and we want to do at-home spas because professional services aren't as available to us anymore. But there has also been this massive influx of just newness, new formulas, new launches, new brands even. It's been a lot to a point where admittedly, I was experiencing skincare fatigue. It has felt overwhelming at times. So I just want to share with you the things that brought me a lot of joy to use this year. That has been a pretty important component, obviously not sacrificing on functionality at all, but these are the formulas and the devices that I use that really just made me happy. Just so you know, I'm fully aware that I've been slacking on keeping you updated with my skincare routines. I think the last one I did was in the summer, but they are coming up and I'm doing something a little different for my winter one, but you will actually see some of these products that I'm talking about, um, you know, being used and how I use them in those routines. One of the most special cleansing formulas I've tried is this one from Lovina, their Dragon's Blood Vitamin C Cleansing Oil. This is my I'm really going to treat and pamper myself cleanser. It was introduced to me through Boxwella and I've already repurchased. First things first, this is an emulsifying oil cleanser, which really is the only kind I use, which means it emulsifies and it rinses off completely clean. The other thing, it cleanses really, really well. It does a great job of removing all the impurities, the layer of grime, sunscreen, makeup, layers of skincare, all that stuff. Pretty unique blend of oils that you don't commonly see in formulas. Full of antioxidant, all superfoods. This also has THD, but what makes it really special is it contains 2% double encapsulated salicylic acid in an oil cleanser, I know. But the double encapsulation is what makes it safe to use around the eye area, but still allow it to penetrate deeply where it needs to go deeply. The founder also explained to me that it is actually really good to use around the eye area. For those of us who are milia prone and tend to get a lot of milia around or a lot of congestion around this area, this is a cleanser that you will benefit more from if you really take your time with your cleanse. I like to really do a good massage. You know, you could even use leave it on as a mask. The thing that I enjoy the most about this is the way it smells. It smells like pure, fresh, good guava. This has been great at just helping my skin decongest after wearing a mask all day. It's not drying. It's not irritating at all. It's actually very gentle. Another favorite first cleanser that I love and have been using for completely different reasons is this one from Claire's, their gentle black fresh cleansing oil. This is their new cleansing oil, which I prefer to their original black cleansing oil. It's just such a simple formula and it feels really natural. Actually, there's only six ingredients and probably the most unobtrusive blend of oil oils like jojoba, sunflower seed, grape seed, but also has black currant oil for just an antioxidant boost. It's a light blend, so this will suit pretty much all skin types. It's also really gentle, super gentle, and you know, rinses off completely clean, emulsifies, won't leave your skin feeling any which way, not stripped, not dry, just really good. No scent to this at all, and it's just been really great, especially when my skin has been feeling particularly sensitive, whether it's because I'm retinizing. Well, recently I have been retinizing, so this has been kind of a savior. For second cleansers, I've really liked Allies of Skin's Molecular Silk Amino Hydrating Cleanser. I'm not really using a lot of gel cleansers these days because there's so many of them and they all really feel the same, but this one did stand out to me. I love how smooth it makes my skin feel after I use it. pH of 5.5, it has some beautiful oils full of hydrators, some really lovely antioxidants, but also the silk amino acids, which I wonder if that has anything to do with why my skin feels silky afterwards. My skin has been very grateful for this second cleanser, Avino's Calm and Restore Nourishing Oat Cleanser. This is probably my favorite formula from Avino. During the time when I was really retinizing and everything hurt so much, this was such a skin saver. This is instant relief to my skin and in a cleanser. This does not foam at all. It's not um, a foaming gel cleanser. In fact, it doesn't even have any of... Um, the traditional recognizable cleansing agents or detergents in it, whether it's naturally derived or not. This contains oat powder and another ingredient that has cleansing properties to it, but it is about as gentle as they come. But at the same time, it does cleanse your skin. It's very much like, you know, my favorite La Roche-Posay hydrating cleanser, except for it's got a really 
thick, satisfying gel texture to it that feels really comforting when you're applying it and spreading it on your skin. It's a fantastic morning cleanser or a day where you're not really wearing layers of um, makeup, water-resistant sunscreen, and you just need one simple, easy cleanse. A hydrating toner that I've just been really enjoying and loving this year is this one from Keep Cool and Soothe, their bamboo toner. This is already my second bottle. This has a nice lightweight texture, but it is fully, fully hydrating, but it makes it so wonderful for layering your hydration. If you want to do more than one skin, I do about three skins sometimes, and sometimes I just need one. This whole brand is built on the skincare merits of bamboo, which I've noticed in a lot of my favorite formulas that I've been using this year. Not only is it really hydrating, but also has antioxidant benefits to it, but also what's pretty special is it has a high amount of natural silica. You just smooth the surface of your skin, make it feel really smooth, but also also give a very natural and glowy radiance. This is 85% bamboo water, but it also contains urea, which is the ultimate, like just skin calming, skin soothing ingredient. It's got all our favorite hydrators, the glycerins, the sodium hyaluronates. Um, this really is, you know, it's been simple, fabulous. I haven't talked about any new mist favorites for a while until this year. This one from Peach and Lily, their Glass Skin Veil Mist. This is part of the Glass Skin Collection. It's probably one of my favorite mists to date. I use this all day long, first thing when I wake up in the morning. This is an essence in a mist. It has all our skin loving ingredients. It's got like three different weights of hyaluronic acid, five different forms of ceramides, as well as cholesterol and phytosvingosine, which is, you know, obviously a skin barrier strengthening trio helps us, our skin retain moisture, but also um, it's got like centella asiatica and all its derivatives, metacasticide, asiatica side, <laughs> sits on a base of cucumber water. This really is a very calming formula. Also has the bamboo extract. But what I love about it is it's just that perfect um, lightweight emulsion so that it is sort of milky, but it's not, there's no greasiness. It's not heavy. It sinks into your skin, but it holds. It holds everything in your skin. It's not like spraying, you know, thermal mineral water where it just kind of evaporates. And then sometimes your skin even feels drier. Your skin does not feel drier when you use this. But without leaving that sort of heavy glycerin layer um, on top of your skin, like some of the heavier mists do, this is very, very lightweight. There are a few acid toners that I really enjoyed this year. And I'm talking about toners that actually help resurface the skin as well. You know, ones that incorporate, you know, some of my favorite acids like mandelic or PHAs and, you know, all different types. But the one that I enjoy the most or makes me the happiest to use is this one from Josh Rosebrook, the Daily Acid Toner. I know this sounds corny, but I feel like this was formulated with a lot of love. It brings me joy to use. This is a true hybrid of hydrating toner and gentle resurfacing properties. One could actually use this every day. Look, there definitely are days where my skin is so crusty. Um, I want those overnight smoothing results, but I am loving this trend of low concentrated acid toners, ones that work really effectively, but gently over time. I do think these formulas work better for me. There's no chance of redness or tingling or irritation or overdoing it, but the resurfacing does happen. It smells like hibiscus tea to me. It, it also looks like hibiscus tea, which, you know, makes me happy. Um, there's some turmeric in here. There are no added fragrant elements like essential oils or anything like that, but yeah, I love it. I explained in my last skincare routine videos that, you know, this year everything has really been pared down mainly because, you know, I'm not going out as much anymore. I'm not getting the same kind of exposure, outdoor exposure, but also I'm like never wearing any makeup. There's just no reason for me to. And I, I actually am one of those people I enjoy not having to wear makeup. I spent most of my life just not wearing it. Um, but also with the mask wearing, I've just wanted to ease up on the layers. I haven't really required or needed more skincare layers at all. So I've been relying more on my serums and actually my moisturizers to do the double duty, to be multifunctional so that I don't need as much in my skincare routine. I need fewer layers. You know, I, you know, my last few routines, I didn't even use a hydrating toner at all, which is unusual for me. I just used the serum. There are two favorites from Clur that I've been obsessed with all year. I've gone through them way too quickly. The first one is Immersion. This is your ultimate hydrating plus serum. And I'm talking about a huge plus. This is barrier strengthening, barrier repairing, you know, which is it's kind of what you need in a, in a well-rounded hydrating serum. There's no point in adding hydration when your skin is too weak or too compromised to actually make sure everything 
gets, you know, held in. This has everything I need and pretty much everything I want in a formula. I'm a little obsessed with this. I've gushed about it countless times as it is already, but pretty much like I couldn't um, wish for a better more beautiful balanced formula that makes my skin feel so plumped out and bouncy. This has the green and white tea base, the beta glucan, the niacinamide, the vitamin C derivatives, peptides, adaptogen roots um, that I love so much, the natural moisturizing factors. I mean, I could go on. And also Clur's Symmetry Fluid. It's such an indulgent antioxidant serum because it has just this wonderful combination of the plant-rich antioxidants as well as the effective synthetic antioxidants as well. This is such a happy addition to my morning routine because it just really helps boost environmental protection for your skin. I like to use this in addition to my l ascorbic acid serum as well or any other vitamin C serum for that really flattering, mochi, bright, even skin. I'm obsessed with the I'm from rice serum. I'm coming down to the end of this, which is a little scary, but that's always nice to when you have a formula that you love so much, you're scared of it ending rather than you're just trying to finish it, you know? There are a few serums I find to be as flattering to the skin. Um, obviously, this is very hydrating. And as with the rice toner, the hydration really stays there. I don't know if there's some sort of layer of rice bran or something that makes your skin feel so smooth, but everything that the moisture hydration just kind of stays there. So everything remains bouncy and plump, but also it just makes the skin look so bright and even, um, but with a nice glossy kind of radiance as well. This applies more like a lightweight, milky hydrating gel. This contains 73% of the really nourishing rice bran extract, but it also has niacinamide in it. It's a few different weights of hyaluronic acid, tranexamic acid. It's also got all the calming ingredients, the elantoin, the metacasicide, also has a bit of squalane in it, but it is an oil or greasy at all. Um, it's just well balanced. A really potent, powerful serum favorite is Dr. Sam's Brightly. This is my new favorite azelaic acid serum. It's powerful stuff. In fact, you know, it's kind of sweet because I was introduced to the benefits of azelaic acid through Dr. Sam Bunting when we did a video together a couple of years ago. But she was the first person who really talked about um, this ingredient in a very practical way. So I understood why I would need it, how I would use it, and how it would actually benefit my skin. It's made such a difference. In fact, it has been part of my skincare routine for the past couple of years now. It was um, part of my tretinoin formula for Curology. It works wonders on all kinds of redness, urethema, or inflammation, which includes acne. It's actually such an effective post-acne treatment or a preventative one as well. You know, it really works well on scarring. Um, and it's also really effective for people who tend to have the vascular redness like, you know, rosacea or who are prone to rosacea like myself. I have very reactive skin. Actives like acids and, you know, tret, retinols all tend to really exacerbate that. So regular use of azelaic acid also tends to tone down that response over time as well. So your skin will become less reactive over time. Brightly has 10% azelaic acid, 5% niacinamide, um, asorbyl glucoside, which is a vitamin C derivative, as well as bacchyl. So what I love about this serum though is the same thing that I love about all her formulas. It's got just the most beautiful texture, which when you are formulating with azelaic acid, that is not an easy thing to do. In fact, most um, brands will actually opt to work with as a Claire, like some derivative of azelaic acid instead, because it's just so much easier to have textural elegance. Brightly and Paula's Choice Azelaic Acid Booster are the only two formulas that are actually really elegant and easy to use, easy to wear, easy to layer. Um, Paula's Choice is more for people with oily skin. What I love about Brightly is it's just so nourishing, it's hydrating, and it feels great for those who have maybe drier, more dehydrated skin types. It's fantastic to use in your morning routine, especially when you pair it with vitamin C. It's like a, a powerful pairing. Or you can just use it in lieu of vitamin C if, if ascorbic acid is something that you can't use. This is um, a great alternative. I love a niacinamide serum, although I'm really particular about them. And even though there are plenty out there, 
I really still just stick to the one Paula's Choice that I love so much. Um, there is a new one that I've been enjoying. It's this one from Allies of Skin. Their prebiotic and niacinamide pore refining booster. This has 10% niacinamide in it, but what I love about it, which is the same reason I love the Paula's Choice one as well, above and beyond all the other, you know, um, niacinamide serums out there that are also 10%, is that it's more focused on being a very complete and beautiful formula rather than just about the 10% niacinamide, just that single ingredient. So this is such a beautiful serum. It's got so many gorgeous ingredients in it and just really keeps your skin healthy as a whole. It's just a very complete and robust Bust serum. I've been using a vitamin C serum lately that uses the derivatives instead of my usual L-ascorbic acid serum because my skin has been retinizing something awful um, recently and I just have not been wanting to deal with any low pH formulas or anything that could really kind of take things further over the edge. And I've been really enjoying this one from Youth to the People. Their 15% Vitamin C and Caffeine Energy Serum. This contains three of the more powerful derivatives, in my opinion, that are also really great at just brightening up the skin tone as well, and really effective in doing that. But also what I love about this is the glow factor. Something in this just makes my skin glow hard. And it's not from shimmer, glitter, it's not metallic. It's really natural amazing texture, so lightweight, just sinks into your skin, but it also makes my skin feel energized. It's got the yerba mate, the caffeine, and other ingredients that have really, I felt like, calmed my skin down and made it not look so patchy um, during more, you know, desperate times. But yeah, no, I've, I've really enjoyed this. So something new that I've been loving so much, but it hasn't been new to me because I've actually had this for a few months now, but it was under embargo, so I really couldn't talk about it. This is a new type of C serum that happens to be a sunscreen. It's Super Goop's Daily Dose Vitamin C and SPF. This has an SPF of 40, a PA of three pluses, and my skin has been loving this, especially during these colder, drier months. This is a vitamin C serum that's actually an SPF as well. So it's kind of like that perfect pairing in one, but it is supposed to be used the way you would use a serum. So before you use moisturizer, and this really kind of encourages the layering of sunscreen so that if you use this, you can also still use another sunscreen over your moisturizer as well for extra protection. I've worn it in a few different ways, but I kind of really love wearing it on its own. It can actually be a two-in-one moisturizer because it's got a very silky moisturizing texture. It's really moisturizing actually. It's quite flattering. It makes your skin look really beautiful and glossy. In fact, I prefer this and the way this makes my skin look to the glow screen because the glow screen is kind of more metallic looking, whereas this looks really natural without being super heavy. But yeah, I mean, if you have dehydrated normal to dry skin, you're going to really love this. This is a chemical sunscreen, so no cast, completely invisible. And as with all their formulas, no octanoxate, no oxybenzone. This also contains 10% 3-O-ethylated ascorbic acid. So this uses derivatives. It's also got 2% kakadu plum. So yeah, but all in all, I just am so enjoying this. In fact, I kind of find these two to be a great combination for those really sunny days where I feel like there's going to be a lot of sun exposure for me. I would actually probably layer this and follow it with this. I love the CC screen. In fact, this is probably one of their more, more powerful protective formulas. This is an SPF of 50 and a PA of four pluses, which I think this might be the only one with four pluses. For my favorite sunscreens of this year, I really have a series of videos of my favorites. Two eye cream favorites that I have been loving this year. Um, one of them is this one from Peach and Lily. They're pure peach retinoic eye cream. This is so beautifully moisturizing, but lightweight, but also really silky. Um, I find this fabulous for both day and night, but it's particularly really nice during the day, only because it does have that sort of natural form of silicone that they developed, which makes everything so smooth and silky when you apply it. So if you apply anything on top of it, it, you know, looks, it lies perfectly, but also it just smooths everything out in, in a really flattering way. This sinks in really well quickly, but also it's just great at just plumping out any kind of fine lines and just really moisturizing this area. This contains bakuchiol or bakukyl, apparently I've been saying it wrong, um, and rosehip seed oil, different forms of natural forms of vitamin A and precursors to retinol. Um, so it doesn't actually have retinol in it, so you can use it during the daytime. This is actually really packed with antioxidant superfoods, um, obviously all the hydrators and peptides. The texture is so beautiful. It also has the bamboo extract. The other eye cream 
cream that I've been loving, especially in the last few months, is the one from Youth to the People. Their Dream Eye Cream with Goji Stem Cell and Ceramides. So for years now, I've been avoiding these heavier, more moisturizing eye creams, mainly because at some point I did develop a few milias um, that just needed to go, and they took forever to go away. You know, it's been good now. Like, things have been clear and I kind of been wanting, just craving to go back to the heavier eye creams again. This eye cream just feels so rich and creamy without making things heavy. In fact, it even sits beautifully under concealer, um, but it just really plumps this entire area out and just makes the skin look so like not cracked and dry and creasy, which, you know, I love. An oil serum that has completely captured my heart is this one from Biofeel, their Bio Barrier Nourishing Oil. There are a few things I find special about this, but one of my favorite things about it is that it uses fermented green tea seed oil. Many of you know how much I love just the whole fermented green tea thing. It's something that I've witnessed with my own eyes. I've watched green tea being fermented, um, and all it does is just really enhance its antioxidant prowess. It's also one of my favorite oils. Not only is it so rich in antioxidants, but also it's one of those dry, texturally elegant and luxurious, quick absorbing oils. In fact, this entire blend is full of the antioxidant rich um, dry oil variety. So this absorbs really quickly, but also you can feel the texture. It's so not oily or oil-like. It's just, it just sinks into the skin. This also contains rose hips, squalane, grapeseed. It's got THD in it as well. This has just got a lot of beautiful brightening power. It's moisturizing in, in a subtle but you know effective way, but it's just a powerful oil serum. I've tried some moisturizers that I really like this year, but a couple of them that I just love and I know I will probably be using in the years to come. One of them is I'm From's Rice Cream. This is a lighter moisturizer. It feels light and hydrating and less kind of creamy and dense, but there's something about it that really works for even much drier skin, I feel as well, because it, everything just kind of holds in there. Again, I don't know if it's because of the rice bran or whatever. Also for me, the way a moisturizer finishes on the skin is pretty much my makeup. It's, it's everything. And this finishes so beautifully in the most glowy, healthy, hydrated way. Application-wise, this is so pleasant because it really is very hydrating, you know, right from the moment you apply it. And as you're applying it, it just, it's, it's refreshing on your skin. This has the ceramides, the rice bran water, the rice bran oil. It's just really lovely. No fragrance um, or anything like that. It's just really comforting on the skin. A richer cream that I've just been loving so much is Pharmacy's Honey Halo. This is for those intensely dry periods and it's been great during my retinizing. This is, I, I've been slathering this on my face, practically using it like a mask, but it's really been working. It's velvety, but it's creamy and heavy and it just keeps everything feeling moisturized um, and not like tight and dry. This has ceramides in it and of course their signature buckwheat honey as well as royal propolis. In fact, there's enough of that in here that you can really smell it. And I love that natural honey smell. I kind of live for it. A balm that is so special. I've never seen anything or used anything like this, and it's just so good, is from Life Botanicals, their Sanctuary Barrier Balm. First of all, the texture of this is unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, this is whipped in a way that when you first open it, all the you see a lot of air bubbles in it. It's not like your regular waxy balm as well, but it's also not like oily. It's just a perfect texture to use. It's almost creamy, but, you, but it's a balm. And then when you apply this, it turns into the lightest, um, driest kind of oil blend on your skin. And it really is so beautiful. I've applied this over my entire face. And usually I would never do that because, um, you know, regular balms tend to be quite waxy. It, it would almost be like putting Vaseline on my face, but this really is like putting a nice layer of dry oil on your skin. It transforms when I apply this. So this contains no essential oils, which is pretty rare for a balm um, and pretty rare for really an exceptional luxury balm as well, which is, you know, which I really enjoy. So this actually contains all the beautiful Amazonian butters instead of waxes. So this really is quite luxurious. And it's also why it's so elegant when you apply it, it just transforms, you know, like muru muru butter, but it also has um, some 
beautiful oils in it. It's got the rice bran oil, which is, you know, rich in ceramides and has been sort of a consistent, consistent theme through a lot of my other favorite formulas. This actually works surprisingly well with other skincare. It doesn't feel greasy to me. Sometimes it's nice as a mask just to use on its own as well. It works really well that way, but also it works really well as kind of like a um, final layer sleeping mask as well, just to keep everything in without being too you know, without being so occlusive and unbreathable, but it still gets the job done. It keeps everything locked in. Another favorite discovery that I made through Boxwalla, but this really is just so very versatile and so very unique. This is a year I actually took devices more seriously. I mean, previously, um, there's something that I would use every once in a while, but not consistently enough to actually feel like there are any results happening or for me to feel like the true benefits. But this year I actually did manage to be consistent with certain devices and now I'm kind of like, how did I not use this before? Of course, my LED mask, this has been kind of a revelation. You know, previously I wasn't even a little bit interested in LED masks and now it's like all I want to use. I love this mask so much and I've managed to be pretty consistent with it and it just helps, especially during the days when I'm retinizing. I feel like it's really, really helped. Like things could have been a lot worse. And this actually still made me able to film and wear makeup without looking like a complete disaster. I also feel like it's made my skin a little plumper. At least I feel like my skin looks plumper um, since I've been using this, but I don't know. I, I don't know. The other device that I will be talking about a lot more. In fact, um, I'm going to be talking about all the devices that I explored this year, and there are quite a few of them. So I'm actually going to do a video on, on all of that, or I might do them separately. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I do want to talk about the microcurrent. This has been another game changer for me. This is something that um, I tend to do more in the morning, whereas this is something I do sort of towards the end of the day. This has done a lot for my... My friends call it carb face. I'm loving the immediate effect of microcurrent, but I'm also really beginning to understand the value of working out the deeper inner muscles that is holding the skin together. I mean, you could work on the skin, but if the muscles are sagging, the whole it's going to bring the whole face with it. So, you know, I'm definitely working on a more permanent you know, effect. So I have the zip and the new face. I will do a comparison. I find myself using the new face more because I feel like it's a little better at the lifting effect. I feel there's a little more um, in terms of results there, but also um, it's just a lot simpler to use. I will give you my thoughts on all the different devices, but I have really this year become aware of the value of microcurrent and just keeping those muscles really firm and just working them out. For lips this year, my favorite, of course, is Beneath Your Mask Remedy Conditioning Lip Balm. This balm has some beautiful butters in it, oils and waxes, and it's just so conditioning on the lips and on other areas of the skin as well, um, especially areas that are just really feeling very, very dry. But beyond that, it's also one of the most delightful sensory experiences for me. The way it's smells is it actually makes me feel happier, calmer, you know, just chill. It's mainly a yuzu scent, which is probably one of my favorite scents of all time, but it's very relaxing because it has a little, it's mixing with a little bit of lavender as well, but you no, know, it's, it just definitely alters my mood. So that's it, everyone. These are my 2020 favorites. And I just want to wish you all a 2021 that is full of radiance, glow, good health, happiness, and love. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.